Have you ever imagined that it would be possible to transform an arid and inhospitable landscape into a lush green expanse stretching for hundreds of kilometers? A place where there was once only scorching sand and cracked stones now comes to life with crops, computerized irrigation systems, and machines harvesting food in the middle of nowhere. While the world faces water crises, food shortages, and possible climate change, the land of the pharaohs is building one of the biggest agricultural and engineering ventures in its history. A series of gigantic projects that literally flood the desert in an attempt to save the country's future. But why is a country with such scarce water resources risking such a bold plan? Who's behind this colossal transformation? And most importantly, is it really going to work? Or will it be another dream? Buried in the sands of time, an arid desert was and is being transformed into the new agricultural oasis of the 21st century. That's exactly what Egypt is trying to achieve with the ambitious New Delta Project, also called the New Delta. This mega project is being implemented in the Eldabar region, in northwestern Egypt, a vast desert area about 100 kilometers south of the Mediterranean Sea, and to the west of the traditional Nile Delta, where most of the country's agriculture comes from. Until recently, this area was a completely inhospitable territory, sandy soil, high temperatures, and virtually no natural vegetation. But beneath this arid landscape, there's a hidden asset, a deep aquifer, and the strategic proximity to the Nile River, which allows for the construction of artificial irrigation canals capable of bringing life to these lands. An important point to mention is the size of the project. That's exactly what makes it more impressive. The plan is to irrigate 1.5 to 2.2 million fedans, or nearly 1 million hectares. That's about four times the size of the city of Sao Paulo. In other words, that's more than 9,000 square kilometers of desert being turned into arable land. But the new delta is more than just an agricultural area. It comes with modern integrated infrastructure, like concrete lined canals stretching for hundreds of kilometers and automated pumping systems capable of lifting water over 100 meters. Highways and power lines connect the project to urban centers, solar stations, electrical substations, and even agricultural and biotechnology research centers. The long-term vision goes beyond agriculture. The new Delta is being planned as a smart agricultural city focusing on technology, exports, and sustainability. However, in light of all this, the question arises, what led Egypt to invest billions of dollars to flood the desert? More than 95% of the Egyptian population lives concentrated in just 4% of the national territory along the Nile River. This narrow green corridor, which sustained Egyptian civilization for millennia, can no longer feed over 110 million people and is projected to reach 175 million by 2050. In recent years, Egypt has started importing more than half of the food it consumes, which makes it vulnerable to global crises. The war between Russia and Ukraine, which disrupted the supply of wheat, from where 80% of the country's imports came. Meanwhile, the traditional Nile Delta is suffering from the advance of the Mediterranean Sea, soil salinization, and the reduction of fresh water volume. This is worsened due to the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam filling which controls some Blue Nile flow. If you're new to this project, we have two videos about the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam on our channel. But going back, faced with all these problems, the Egyptian government came up with a bold strategy, expanding the agricultural frontier into the desert. The new delta is the main symbol of this policy, an attempt to ease the pressure on the Nile Valley and ensure greater food security and international prestige. But there is also a political and symbolic factor. The project is directly supervised by the Egyptian armed forces, who control almost all national megaprojects. This militarization ensures speed in execution, but raises concerns about transparency and budget control, since part of the spending happens outside the public budget. 
For many analysts, the new Delta is not just an engineering project. It is also a tool of power used by President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi to demonstrate strength and stability in a country shaken by economic and political crises. Something extremely important that should be mentioned is that the new Delta is not the first project to promise to make the desert bloom. For more than a century, Egypt has been trying to launch mega projects with this ambition, and almost all of them have failed. We have several examples, such as uh, in the 1960s, Gamal Abdel Nasser started the Tosca project, which promised to transform the south of the country into a new agricultural zone. Decades later, Roshni Mubarak reactivated it with great publicity, but the project never reached 10% of its initial goal. Another example is the El Salam Canal in northeastern Egypt, which aimed to irrigate over 600,000 hectares using Nile water. Part of the canal was completed, but the actual agricultural production fell far short of the promises. And even earlier, the Qatar Depression Project proposed in the 1970s to blow up part of the desert with nuclear bombs to connect the Mediterranean to a depression below sea level, something that fortunately never left the drawing board. These attempts or ideas left a lesson. Reclaiming the desert is possible but rarely sustainable. The new delta, therefore, carries not only hope, but also the weight of a century of unfulfilled promises. Turning the desert into an agricultural oasis requires engineering at its limits. The heart of the new delta is the El Rahman Canal, which is approximately 170 kilometers long, although official sources vary between 110 and 170 kilometers, depending on the branches. This canal, entirely lined with concrete, transports 3.5 billion cubic meters of water per year, starting from the Rosetta branch of the Nile, assisted by another coagulation canal, kilometers, which distributed the initial flow. But the secret lies at the source. Egypt is heavily investing in the reuse of treated effluents. In other words, the country built Baal El Bakar, capable of treating five to six million cubic meters per day. And also the largest station, Ammon, inaugurated in 2023 with 7.5 million cubic meters per day, considered the largest in the world. In addition, part of the water comes from the Nubian Aquifer, the largest fossil reservoir on the planet which extends over four countries. Although gigantic, it is a non-renewable resource and salty in the deeper layers. A warning that the project may have a limited lifespan if it relies on it too much. On the ground, engineering also comes into play. Chemical correction, underground sensors, drip irrigation, and drones monitor every hectare. The crops are governed by precision agriculture, a true 4.0 farm in the heart of the desert. But unfortunately, not everything is perfect. Literally. Indeed, the new Delta is an impressive technical achievement, but it's also a high-risk gamble. To irrigate more than a million hectares, Egypt relies on scarce water sources. The extraction of fossil aquifers and the intensive use of treated sewage raise concerns about soil salinity and contamination. Studies in highland areas of Egypt show that the cost of pumping water becomes a critical factor for cost viability, in some cases already making projects economically unfeasible. In the new delta, where some water must be lifted over 100 meters, the energy challenge is even greater. The project's overall cost is also controversial. Initially budgeted at $10 billion, it has already exceeded $13 billion, according to official statements. Although no one knows for sure the real amount involved since they are not being published. Another criticism is that a large part of the production from the new Delta does not go to domestic consumption, but rather to export. The government is betting on high-value crops, with fruits and vegetables destined for Europe and Gulf countries, using the revenues to import cheaper wheat and grains, which contradicts the discourse of food self-sufficiency. In the political field, the project is seen as a propaganda tool for the Sisi regime. 
a means to display power and progress amid economic crisis and rising censorship. And there is also an external factor. The success of the new delta depends on the amount of water released by Ethiopia through the Blue Nile Dam, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Any reduction in the flow can compromise the entire operation. Despite this, the project is comparable in scale to other international experiments, such as Saudi Arabia, with its circular farms powered by central pivot and desalinated water, Israel, a pioneer in drip irrigation and total water recycling, and China, which cultivates the Gobi Desert with biotechnology and artificial intelligence. The difference is that these countries have robust financial reserves and mature technologies, while Egypt depends on quick results to justify the investment. Despite criticism, the new delta is already showing results. In agriculture, there is a clear expansion of fertile land. The country, which used to import more than 60% of the food it consumed, is now seeking to reduce this dependence, even though part of the harvest is destined for export. The project has created tens of thousands of direct and indirect jobs, boosting sectors like solar energy, logistics, and agribusiness. It is estimated up to 5 million people may benefit directly or indirectly from regional production chains. Efforts focus on balancing productivity and sustainability by using clean energy and modern irrigation technologies. Although the long-term challenge is to prevent the return of desertification. In geopolitics, the new delta strengthens Egypt's role as an agricultural and strategic force in North Africa, seeking to reduce vulnerabilities and expand its international bargaining power. But the social impact is still limited. Poverty remains high and food costs are still elevated. Unfortunately for many Egyptians, the benefits of the project have not yet reached their table. In the heart of the desert, where for millennia there was only dust, sun, and silence, now green fields, mirrored canals, and moving agricultural machines are emerging. We must admit that the new delta is not just an irrigation project. It is the symbol of a country that insists on challenging its own limits. The future of the new delta, and perhaps of Egypt, depends on a factor that is beyond its borders. For example, water flowing from Ethiopia. If the flow of the Nile is interrupted, this entire oasis could turn back into sand. Even so, the land of the pharaohs continues to believe in the strength of its engineering, its faith, and its necessity, because in the end, more than just flooding the desert, Egypt is trying to make a new hope blossom, irrigated by technology, courage, and survival. Thank you for watching this video until the end. What do you think about this great Egyptian project? Is it really worthwhile? Is it risky? Share your thoughts in the comments. I want to read them and have a debate here. I'll stop for now. A big hug and see you in the next video.